Okay, 11.2. We are talking about arcs and chords and uh, in circles. And before we do that, I just want you guys to quickly see if you know how to answer these three questions. If not, if you get them wrong, then we'll probably want to come back to it by the end of the video and make sure you know how to do them again. So these are things we should know how to do. Here are the answers. Again, if you didn't get those wrong, hopefully by the end you'll... Uh, you'll remember how to do these things. Okay, today we are talking about properties of arcs and properties of chords and the relationship that those have with each other. And there's lots, lots of vocab that we're gonna talk about today. First of all, an arc. What is an arc? We already know what a chord is. A chord, if we have a circle, a chord is a line segment, a segment that has its endpoints on two parts of the circle. So this is a chord. This is a chord. A chord could also be a diameter. It's not always a diameter. An arc is the outer part of the circle. So it could be between two different points on a circle. So this is a, an arc. This is an arc. That, that black shaded part, this red line would be considered a chord. Okay. It's important that you remember an arc is continuous. So I can't say that this is an arc with this, with this part. This is one arc. This would be a second arc. Those two arcs do not, um, don't make up a bigger arc. They have to be continuous. Okay, so that's what an arc is. Uh, I'm splitting 11.2 up into two different videos because there's a lot of stuff in here. This one's going to be more vocabulary and elementary uh, geometry. And in the second video, we do more of the fun stuff. So again, there's lots of vocab. We already talked about what an arc is. It's the outer part of the circle. Um, some of these words that you might guess, adjacent arc, uh, adjacent means right next to, so adjacent arcs, oops, adjacent means uh, next to, so uh, well, an adjacent arc are two arcs that are touching or right next to each other. You also might be able to guess what a congruent, congruent arcs are, congruent arcs are two arcs that are the same size. And we also might be able to guess what a semicircle is. You guys also might have an idea of what a minor arc or major arc is, but you might not have, uh, and you might have a guess as to what a central angle is. Well, there's a really good relationship between an arc and a central angle. An arc, as I said before, is the outer part of a circle. So let's say I want to say talk about this arc right here, just this part. Well, here's the center of that circle. I'll call it C for center, cool center. Now, if I make a, a radius, we'll call this point A and this point B, BC would also be considered radius. So a central angle is formed by two radii. It's in the center of the circle, which is why it's called a central angle. That makes sense, right? So this part right here in between the two radii, this is called a central angle. Okay, so central angle. And the relationship between the central angle and the arc is that whatever the angle is, the central angle is, that arc will have the same measure. So for example, if this is 20 degrees, guess what? This arc will have a measure of 20 degrees. So today we're talking about measure of arcs as well. And I want you to take note that a measure of arc is not the length of the arc. Okay, so some key things that I would write down are that, is that a central angle is formed by two radii, or it's in the center of a circle. That's key, key point number one. Key point number two is that a measure of an arc is not the length. That's what we're talking about later. And then the third major important thing that I talked about already is that a central angle, that's central angle, <laughs> is congruent or exactly the same size as as the arc. Those are three important things that you want to write down. Okay, so we've talked about the relationship between the central angle and the arc. Here's another little blurb about it. Now, uh, on the vocab, we had a, a two distinguishing arcs. We had a minor arc and we had a major arc. So these are other important information that you'll want to write down. A minor arc, I want you to notice, is an arc whose whose points are on the interior of a central angle. So if you look at this picture, B is the center of the circle and AC is an arc. 
Now, minor arc AC, I want you to notice that this means measure, M stands for measure, of minor arc AC is this part right here that we're talking about. And this minor arc is inside the central angle. So here's central angle X. Notice that arc is inside of it. Okay, so I, want, I would write down that minor arc is inside the central angle. I would also write down that a minor arc only needs two letters to, um, to signify that it's a minor arc. So you, you only need to write two letters. And what that means is the closest, uh, the closest distance between A and C. So we wouldn't go all the way around and talk about this arc. We would talk about the shortest distance between A to C. So this part of the arc is what they're talking about when they say measure of arc, arc AC. And I want you to also notice that when we're talking about arcs, we are not having a straight line. This is a line. Now we get to draw arcs. And so that curvature means it's an arc. Okay, so two letters for a minor arc. Uh, it's in the inside of a central angle. I, you know, sometimes people say minor. That could mean smaller. Not always, but for the most part, it means smaller. Major arc, you could guess, usually is referring to a larger arc. And the important things to notice about that is that it's on the exterior of a central angle. So what that means is here is our same central angle, just like we had before. It's not A major arc is not inside that arc. It's everything else. It's everything exterior. So all this red part is considered the major arc. Usually it's larger, not always. Also notice that a major arc is represented with three letters, A, D, C. So because if I wrote arc AC, that means the shortest distance. By including that third letter D, that means I have to go from A to D to C, which is usually makes a larger arc. Okay? Something else, you guys probably know a semicircle is the same thing as half a circle. An important thing that you might want to notice is that a, a semicircle is formed by the diameter formed by the diameter, and it always equals 180 degrees. So if you see a diameter, that means that this part, this semicircle, is going to, that measure of that arc will always be 180 degrees. And this other half of the semicircle will also equal 180 degrees. So just in case you didn't know before, another huge point is that a circle always adds up to be 360 degrees. So if you add up all the arcs in a circle, it always equals 360 degrees, and that'll help us for what we're doing in our homework. Okay, so just another point. Minor arcs are named by two points. Major arcs usually are named by three points. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do tonight in our homework is go back to pie charts and relate it to arc lengths now. Not arc lengths, excuse me, measures of arcs. And remember, I want to remind yourself that we're talking about measures of arcs today and not lengths of arcs. Okay, so when I say what a measure is, I'm not talking about the length. Okay, and that'll just help you out later. So it says find the measure of major arc KLF. So that means we have to start from K, go to L and F. So here we have K. Oops, L and F. I don't know what just happened. Oops, sorry. Okay, so we want to figure out how long that one is. And remember, another important thing that I told you guys to write down is that the central angle is always equal to or congruent to the arc measure. Okay, so that means that a um, measure of KLF is going to be the same thing as angle FJ, FJK. And what do we know about this part chart already? We know that this part represents 65% of the whole circle. So 65% of the whole circle, we know that a whole circle is 360 degrees. So in, to take a percentage, we have to multi, um, find the decimal. So we're going to take 0. 0.65, and we're going to multiply it by 360 because of means to multiply in math. So 0. 0.65 times 360, we get that the central angle and the arc measure are both going to equal 234 degrees. Since we're talking about measures, our answers are going to be in degrees. Okay? Another example, pie charts, more fun chart, pie charts. Measure of angle FMC. So if we look at FMC, it goes from here to here, which is the center, to here. So we have a central angle here. And uh, if I want to figure that out, all I have to do is, well, okay, this part's in it, which is 9%. 
this part's in it, country's in it, which is 10%, and RMB is in it, which is 11%. So if we add those up, we'll get that they total 30% of the whole circle. So 30% as a decimal is 0.3, and you multiply it by 360, and that's going to get you, I'm guessing, 120. Oh, just kidding, 108. It's going to get us 108 degrees. So that's the answer for angle FMC as well as for this arc. Okay, so you're going to try and do B, you title this number one on your notes today, and C, title it number two on your notes today. These questions may end up on the quiz tomorrow. Okay. So uh, the second thing we, we're doing to end this uh, video, adjacent arcs, like we said, are right next to each other. And so what we're going to do is use the arc addition postulate, which is really, really similar to this segment addition postulate we did in uh, the first chapter. Segment addition postulate said if we have this segment, which is one unit long, and this segment, which is two unit long, then that whole thing has to be three units long. We're going to do the same thing for the segment addition postulate. If this arc is two degrees and this arc is one degrees, then the whole thing is three degrees. Sometimes I want you to notice it's easier. If you remember, it's easier. Thank you, Mr. Shalhoub. It's easier if you remember that uh, semicircles add up to be 180 degrees and that whole circles add up to be 360 degrees. So I'm going to speed through these really fast. Okay. Number here, find uh, find measure of arc BD. Uh, it's a minor arc, so the shortest distance between B to D is here. Notice they don't tell us anything about these arcs, but what you can remember is that this whole thing is half of a circle because this is a diameter. So this whole thing has to equal 180 degrees, and we know that this part is 52 degrees. So if we subtract it, we're going to get 128 degrees. And to check your work, 128 degrees here plus 52 degrees here, that is also going to equal a semicircle 180 degrees. There are other ways to do it, but this I think is the easiest way, just to look for semicircles. That'll work sometimes, not all the time. So another quick example, measure of JKL. JKL, that's this one right here. All right, well, again, if you look for semicircles, you're going to figure out that this whole thing equals 180 degrees. And we know that this one part is 40 degrees. So if we want to find the remainder, what we can do is subtract. So sometimes you're going to be adding and sometimes you're going to be subtracting. 140 degrees is this one right here. Some other things that you might want to look for are vertical angles. That can help you solve these problems. Um, and also remember that a whole circle equals 360 degrees. And that, that can help you as well. Okay, so what you're going to do here, I gave you the answer. <laughs> Uh, which is lucky. This question might be on the quiz tomorrow. I want you to do this and title this number three, please. Um, and yeah, it might be on the quiz tomorrow, which I already gave you the answer for. Lucky.